Hey everybody, welcome back to Jalopy Shop. So today uh, I decided to skip filming for a little bit and kind of work ahead and then I'd catch you guys up so that you didn't have to like watch me fast forward through a bunch of boring like double speed video. But I promised you guys a cross member and that's what we've got right here. Um, so I kind of I went through, prepped everything so that I could remove the seat out kind of worked my hands underneath the seats, put some, some Gorilla Tape on these pieces to hold them in place where I had them with the seat in position, and then lifted the seat out of the way so that our initial little pieces of cardboard that we had set up here for uh, bending all of our metal to make our platform for the seat to mount to would stay in place. Once I got the seat out of the way, kind of saw some things that I wanted to do a little bit different. Um, one of the things that I didn't realize early on when I was making my initial placements was that I had the seat rails uh, not parallel to each other. So I had to extend uh, both of our, or I should say all four of our uh, platforms that we're going to mount the seats to. Not a big deal because once I had the seat out of the way, I could really just extend, bend up some more cardboard and extend those pieces and I just taped them together here with some Gorilla Tape just to hold them in place uh, while I was doing the kind of the, the planning. So um, we went through, uh, kind of show you what we did here. So if we're looking over here, I'll try not to blind you guys with the light. So if we're looking over here, this is the first one that we put in place. I know it's kind of moving around a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, this tape is its just here to kind of hold things in place while we make all of our planning marks. So we had this one here, and this one up here was our, was our first two for the, uh, the front mounting points of the seat. So when we paralleled the seat rails to each other so we get the full travel of the sliders I had to extend this one, number two, uh, back all the way. I extended it all the way back to the original factory slider which is a little bit shorter than this one but that's okay. So with this one I actually brought it forward and brought it into where that old uh, piece of metal we had for the exhaust tunnel is. Back here at the inside rail um, just made a little extension piece here so that we can bring this over and make it flush with the, with the exhaust tunnel and just kind of carry this this line through here. Back here at the rear, we extended this just a little, we extended it by a couple inches and then made this little flap so that this will, we can weld this right to the factory seat rail. So, you know, these, par these parts are the originally in the car that the seat mounted to. So those are very strong and they're, I've never seen any of those fail unless you've got a a severe amount of rust already in the car. So then I made this little piece here which is our another cardboard template for our cross member which we're gonna we're gonna bend up cut to fit and then it will drop right in between those two pieces and it'll get all welded it'll get welded all the way to the floor pan here, tied in to the pieces that the, the seat platform is going to mount to on both sides, tied into the exhaust tunnel on this side, tied into the inner rocker structure over here. Um, and uh, so that will restore the amount of strength that, that we had here initially. So let's get to bending some metal. Okay, so we're Got a cross member piece here. You might remember how it sat in the car, kind of like that. We've got it labeled so we know driver's side. This is going forward, passenger side, just in case we 
get ourselves confused so we can make some of the same marks on it right after we make our cut or make our piece cut out. So you can see here I right here I made a little mistake and I cut a little too much too much off. So I just taped a piece of cardboard to it kind of give me a reference at what I need to do. So try to use a straight edge whenever you can. It kind of gives you an advantage on on some things. I'm just going to trace it out. Since our Sharpie is failing miserably right now, I'm just going to go over and back it up with my grinder pencil here. And then here I need to make sure that I carry this line with this angle through to the end of the piece. So there we go. Now, the last thing we can do here is we can make our marks where we're going to have our bends. Sharpies recovered just enough to do that. And then we'll make that mark with a straight edge before we do our bends. And then we'll just put our marks on here like we have driver, passenger, forward. There we go. So let's get this thing cut out and then I'll meet you guys over at the sheet metal. So, Got our piece cut out here for our <clears throat> for our cross member that we're going to put in. Um, made my marks on the top side of it, but you have to remember you kind of have to bend it backwards. So the way this thing's going to bend the metal, we have to make sure that we line it up properly so it don't bend it the wrong way. So we're going to you know, slip our piece of metal in underneath here. Gonna get our get our marks lined up with the where we're gonna bend. We'll put our clamps on. Just a little bit here and there. Okay, let's see how see how this goes. I think we'll get one more clamp for this in. All right, so. Put a third clamp on here, see if that makes a difference. Now we're going to try to bend this piece of metal here. All right, look at that. Easy as eating pie, right? Oh, 
Now look at that, one nicely bent piece of 18 gauge sheet metal. So now we're going to put our other, put our other bend in there. Same process as last time. We're going to line up our line up our stuff right on the right on the bend on the where the bend is going to happen. Gonna put this in there, real nice and tight. Double check and make sure everything's kind of lined up where we want it. And we'll make our bend. And we're going to have to move one of our clamps out of the way here a little bit. So you can kind of see one of the limitations of the lesser expensive item here that we're working with. But it is doing the job just fine for the stuff that we need it to do. Make a nice nice clean bends in this metal. Alright, so let's get this out of here and we'll go back over and see how it fits in the car. Alright, so we're back in the car. We've got our recently bent piece of cross member tube or metal here. Um, and uh, we're going to give this a test fit. Now most of the time when you do this kind of stuff, it's still going to need some trial and error to get it to fit just right. But really good fabricators can do this in one shot. I don't think this is going to happen in just one shot. But we'll get close. So you can see I left the other pieces in here to use as a point of reference. And we are we are fairly close. Um, got uh, just about the height that we want. We might trim a little bit off the the bottom here to make it fit kind of in, in here just a little bit better. Um, let's see if we can show you the. Show you the back side here without disturbing anything else. So I think if we trim this down a little bit, get it to drop down into our into our channel a little bit, um, I think we'll be we'll be good. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna make all the rest of these pieces get these all cut out and bent up. Uh, we're going to use the same procedure. I'm just going to flatten out the piece of car, a piece of cardboard on our work surface, cut it out, bend it, and then we'll test everything and uh, I'll uh, come back and grab you guys after I get all these uh, all these pieces cut out and kind of set into place here. Uh, and then we can kind of give a, a good once over before we start welding it in. So we'll see you in a little bit. <clears throat> all right, everybody. I told you I'd bring you back after I got all these sheet metal pieces cut and bent out. Um, wasn't real interesting work, just kind of some busy work that I had to do. Um, but we've got all of these pieces now cut out in sheet metal from our templates that we had. So we'll be able to prep and weld all of these items. We've still got a few more things we need to do before we can weld these brackets in. We need to get the seat back in here. Um, figure out a way to kind of hold these in place while we're putting the seat in and out for a few more times. But we need to mark the tracks where we're going to put, where they're going to actually going to attach to these items. And then we will uh, we'll drill a hole and we'll weld a nut on from the bottom so that we have 
something to run a bolt through and uh, have threads as opposed to trying to thread sheet metal which we we know isn't going to work um, won't be strong enough but with a nut welded on the back side of this sheet metal uh, it'll give it plenty of strength um, once we have all that then we can just weld these into place uh, we'll prep the floor pan get everything uh, down to bare metal get some of these uh, this flashing or this lip off of here from from the uh, old cross member so everything looks nice and nice and clean in here um, and then we'll uh, we'll weld these in and then we'll have to come along and we'll make some end pieces to cover up the little holes in the ends I don't know if you'll be able to see them but back here you can see there'll be a hole at the end uh, you know because we just basically made a, a little l-shaped piece there so we'll have to we'll have to close those off <clears throat> you know so they look real nice and factory even though they'll be underneath the carpet um, so still a lot of work to do to get this ready for the new seat to come in but you can see see how it's progressing um, probably spent uh, the past oh, about two or three hours in the shop just working on this stuff getting everything cut out and bent and shaped and you know kind of had to shave stuff down and move stuff around a little bit to get everything to fit in the way I wanted it to but it's in it looks good uh, we've got a good basis now for for uh, getting our our platform ready to weld into the car so that's all the time I have for today but uh, I'll try to pick up a little bit of work tomorrow before I go back to work and uh, we will uh, we'll see how far we can get. Hey everybody, welcome back to Jalopy Shop. So today um, I got kind of an early start, worked on a few things here. Um, one of the big things I did was kind of go through and, and clean up all the areas where we're going to be welding and got rid of all of the leftover flange material that was in here from the cross member that used to be here. Uh, if you'll remember there was a, a flange that went all the way across here where the cross member was spot welded to the to the floor pan. So went through, got rid of all the, uh, the flange material, cleaned up all the little spot welds. Um, it's just kind of kind of grimy grunt work, not really anything interesting to watch, just more sparks being thrown. So but one of the things that we need to do is get rid of these factory sound deadening pads that are in here. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. Um, some people like dry ice and then chip it out. Um, I noticed when I was working on some of the stuff working using the grinder that um, heat loosened it up really good. Um, like this piece just kind of peeled up on its own. So we're going to go through, we're going to going to grab the heat gun and uh, we're going to run it for a little bit and see if uh, see if we can get this stuff to come up because over here where I was using the wire wheel the stuff just gets na just flung everywhere it's nasty it's gross um, and uh, I'm going to see if we can just heat gun this stuff out real quick and uh, I'll show you guys kind of how that works we've got basically our two tools of of destruction here one is a screwdriver, and the other is a stiff putty knife. Um, as you can tell, I've used these tools before for similar purposes. So I'm just going to start out with the heat gun on the lowest setting. Let's see if we can, we can make something happen here. So you can see just with even the heat gun on the low setting and getting underneath that just to, just letting it sit on there for a minute look at how easy that comes off stuff's been on there for 40 some years comes off real easy nice and slow i've used this technique with bondo before and it works good with bondo too if you have a big area of bondo you're trying to get rid of um, i've actually used the stiff putty knife you can see it's got not much flex to it um, stiff putty knife and a heat gun, especially if you're in a place where you don't want to make a lot of dust, you can 
you can really remove a lot of, of, of filler from an old surface just using this technique. And cleanup is really easy. You just sweep it up when you're done or vacuum it up. Or... Remember, if you're going to set this down when you're done, it's going to be really hot. So just be careful of that. Also remember that these little pieces, until they cool down, will be really hot. Usually these are made of a tar-based product, so they do get hot just kind of like your driveway or asphalt would. <clears throat> so you can see that was a pretty quick process, you know. Uh, seven or eight minutes of just basically scraping to clean up this whole probably two foot square area. Now we've got basically, you know, uh, a real quick run over with a wire wheel to uh, clean up this area if we run a weld to it or, you know, put over some kind of, uh, some kind of paint. Um, so you know, cleanup is as easy as scooping this stuff up into the trash or sucking it up with a shop vac. Um, and uh, so that's how I recommend getting rid of it. Um, your results may vary, but that's, uh, that's the best way I've found for, for both this kind of stuff. Bondo, I'm, I'm even, I've even stripped paint off an old car with a heat gun when I didn't have uh, any facilities to kind of do any sanding or anything like that. So. Just another technique you can put in your toolbox. Um, I'm gonna scrape this other section here and uh, then we'll, we'll get you guys caught up as to where our progress is at. So there we go, like super easy, quick cleanup, just like I was saying. I mean, if I if I had wire wheeled all that stuff out of there, I'd have a I'd have a mound of dust in here this tall. So I'm sure some of you are wondering what this is right here, why there's a circle with a bunch of, of goop over the top of it. Um, I'm not sure the answer to that. So if someone knows the answer of why these circles are here in the floor pan. Uh, I assume it was for some sort of production mechanism that maybe held the body up or something like that, but basically there's a little plate here that's got some 
some sealant over the top of it that holds it in place. So I've never really known what the purpose of it was, but if someone knows, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll try to touch on it uh, next time and uh, let everyone else know. Uh, so uh, I'm going to clean up this little front section here and then we'll uh, get back to metal stuff. And that's all there is to it. Stripped out the all the rest of that sound deadening and the undercoating and all that. Went out really easy. You can see not a lot of dust. It's all in big chunks. So I'm going to clean this up and we'll keep working on. So I want to I want to point out something to you guys that if you're if you're working on these cars and you're not familiar with how they're put together, um, you see all these holes that came up when I took the took the uh, that asphalt uh, sound deadening out of here. So this actually is a it's hollow in here. It's shaped like a triangle. The end of it comes out. Um, behind the bottom part of the front fender and it's it's sealed uh, so nothing can get in there uh, all the way across on this car and I I don't think this is factory um, see this little chunk of stuff right here somebody put in a bunch of that expanded foam to for whatever reason they thought it was a good idea um, don't do that. This stuff, like the great stuff, the stuff you get at home, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, or uh, you, you use it for construction, it's, it's terrible. It, it, it attracts water. Uh, it, it just, it's not, it's good for your house, not for your car, okay? Um, and uh, there's no reason that you'd need to fill this void with uh, expanding foam. Uh, it's a, it, it's just gonna shorten the life of your project. You're gonna put all the work into fixing rust and all that kind of stuff, and try to keep it at bay. This stuff is just gonna. So I wanted to wanted to point out uh, something else on here. Uh, I've had this car for about seven years now, and. Uh, I started doing some body work on it. Some of the stuff I did, uh, this was the car that I learned uh, panel replacement on. So some of the stuff we're going to go back and look over over the course of doing this um, was my first time uh, doing this stuff several years ago. I, I won't say I'm an expert now, but I, I've definitely gotten some practice between now and then. So uh, when they put the expanding foam whoever one of the previous people that owned this car was, it was all wedged up in the ends here. That little piece that was over here that I just took out um, was one of the ones that I kind of had to chase all the way back. You can still see some remnants of where they tried to fill the fill this whole section with expanding foam. I still don't know why I did it. Um, but anyway, I digress. So this is one of the areas that I started to patch and for whatever reason got ADD and decided to move on to other things. So this is a, this definitely needs to be fixed. This is bad metal. We're going to have to cut this out and uh, kind of redo this little corner here. Um, everything else in here looks in pretty good shape. I had a little bit, probably can't see it because of the glare, but uh, right over here there's, there's just a little bit of surface rust on the floor pan. You know, we'll just wire wheel that off, but it was good to get all that sound deadening out of here so that we could look and see, you know, what exactly we're working with. Even even over the exhaust tunnel, it's good to scrape all this stuff up. It's 40-some years old. Um, you know, was 
Was there a chance of there being rust underneath the sound deadening on top of the exhaust tunnel? More than likely not, but it's good to get it out of the way and we're just going to start fresh. We'll, we'll put sound deadening back into this car, um, but we've got a lot of work to do uh, in the meantime before this car is ready for sound deadening. So, um, we're going to get back to working on our uh, seat mounts. So, we can cover we can cover the rust repair in another episode. There you can kind of see it better. You can see see that uh, little hole right there in the corner. That's not supposed to be there. All the other round ones are, and I, I, I don't know what the I don't know if they had a jig that held those things in place while they were working on all that stuff at the factory doing the assembly. But someone out there knows. There's still a few, st still a few older guys on the VW Vortex that worked at the factory and actually contribute some of that information. Um, they, they know a lot about how the the Westmoreland cars were built, and every once in a while pop in and share some of that knowledge. So now we've got. I'm going to put all these back in here and see if everything should line up. So there we go. There's all of our our seat platform uh, and our cross member. Uh, we'll probably do a little more fitting to the front of the cross member. See if we can drop the front of this down just a little bit more and uh, get this. Uh, we'll get the the holes mount, marked and mounted uh, next time for the uh, for the seat to sit on. We'll show you how we're going to do the nuts so that we have something to run the bolt into and uh, we're making good progress and then once this is done we just have to repeat it on the driver's side so until next time thanks for watching jalopy shop get out there and work on something